Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the film spot. Um, Friday night, not a Monday. What is this? But uh, today we're going to talk about the most anticipated movies of 2022. And uh, yeah, I guess this is kind of just like the Film Spot podcast episode. We did one of our favorite of 2021, and now it is our most anticipated of 2022. So I have a few lads here who are going to talk about this with me. So I'll just go hopping in and uh, we'll get started. Yeah. Do you guys need to preface anything? Want to say anything? Uh, just that I am pumped for the ones that end up coming out this year. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's a lot that could come out in late 2022 or just get pushed to, you know, mid to late 2023. So we'll have to see. But uh, no matter what, a lot of these are going to be great. And they're ones that are definitely on my on my my vibe list for uh, for the rest of the year. Yes, the vibe list. Yeah, I'm the same. Like, I feel like we were robbed of some really good film and cinema in 2021 because of this pandemic and that's kind of disappointing as, as someone loves to go to the movie theater all the time and, and watch all these new releases there wasn't a lot of things that i was really excited about last year or, or things that i were excited about got pushed to this year so i'm hoping it's a big bounce back year for the film industry and we get people back in the theaters yeah i definitely think it will be because i think 2020 was definitely way worse than 2021 was a step up from 2020 but i think this will be an even bigger step which is which is good to hear okay absolutely um yeah so we're gonna do top 10 from 10 to 1 and then i'll fill in some gaps with some other like bigger releases or other ones that just didn't make the cut but um okay my first honorable mention because it doesn't even have a release date but it finished filming last year at the end of 2021 it's called The Banshees of Inertion. Inishirin. I don't know how to say it, but uh, I believe that it's the next it's Martin, McDonough Martin McDonough film. McDonough's. Ah. Yeah. So you got Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson returning. The same in Bruges combo, which I love in Bruges. I mean, I love everything Martin McDonough has done. So that is my. Uh, I get, I'll put it as honorable mention because it doesn't really have a release date as of right now, but. I don't know if any of you guys heard about that before, but uh, I am very excited for it, at least. I have it. Uh, Barry Keegan. I yeah, like Barry Keegan's in it, too. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, so. I, 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 w- I was intrigued by that one. Uh, I, w- I wasn't sure if it was one of his plays that he directed, but... Mm, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it was one that really piqued my interest. Yeah, it, I... It, uh, just, uh, it just got out of my... my uh, my honorable mentions list. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Because I think Three Billboards was like, that was my favorite movie of whatever year that came out, like 2017. And we went to see it at TIFF, Spencer. That was like yeah. the best TIFF experience that I've oh, had. Oh, absolutely. It was, it was so awesome, yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, that was my honorable mention. Um, do any of you guys have an honorable mention at all? Uh, yeah, uh, I've got one here. Uh it's the uh, the next uh, film from director Alexander Payne, okay. uh, famous for uh, films like Nebraska and The Descendants and okay. Sideways. Uh, Sideways is a film that always uh, that always stuck with me. That was a really I've good one. I've seen The Descendants and he's... of those ones. Yeah, Descendants is awesome. Yeah, yeah, Descendants is really really good. He he's a really good actors director, and. He's got one coming out at some point late this year, early next year, called The Holdovers. He's returning to uh, working with Paul Giamatti. Uh, it's going to be a film about uh, a, uh, a teacher, a, a troubled student, and a, uh, and, a, and a cook at a boarding school, at an expensive boarding school. Hmm. And it's them staying over the, the holiday break. And it seems like it's going to be a emotional drama full of full of uh uh, it's gonna be a talkie and if there's one thing that (laughs) pain does really really well it's uh making really good dramatic dialogue and directing actors in small casts like this um uh, so that's one that i'm definitely excited for all right yeah that sounds cool so is that one another one where it's like not sure if it's going to come out in 2022 
Yeah, it doesn't have a for sure release date, but mm -hmm. it's one that uh, one that's been on. Uh, I believe Screen Rant talked about it in their their end of their 2022 anticipated, as well as uh, the film stages 2022 anticipated. So okay, cool. Yeah. There's still a chance. I haven't even heard of it. So cool. All right. Uh, do you have an honorable mention, Spencer? I do. All right. Um, what is it? My honorable mention is a film called when you finish saving the world oh yes and i don't really know much about this film other than that it stars a vancouver legend himself Finn wolfhard in oh, yeah. a coming of age film with julianne moore I, I think that's a really cool pairing for a kind of like a mother-son duo and i'm hoping that this kid can kind of show us more depth in his work other than stranger things and and some of the other big titles that he's found himself <laughs> getting busters himself into. Uh, yeah but i think the most important part that or the part that i'm most excited about this film is it's actually jesse eisenberg's directorial debut oh yes which I, i'm really intrigued to to see how that plays out because i feel like a lot of these actors turned directors can really catch fire on their first project um i, I was a big fan of jonah hill's mid 90s for for what it was mm, i, I yeah. thought that was a great film and um a great way for him to dip his toe into kind of an, a new a new realm for his work um i'm not like the biggest jesse eisenberg fan but i like i think it's going to be cool nonetheless yeah. yeah totally i'm looking forward to it as well i had a couple friends from school who they saw it i believe it was at sundance and uh i've heard nothing but like it it's a lot of fun it's like a there's some cringe comedy moments which seems very jesse eisenberg <laughs> but um, yeah yeah I, i'm looking forward to it as well uh the third billing billy brick he uh he went to my university as well he's friends with finn wolfhard so uh oh, yeah nice. i'm looking forward to it as well good choice all right uh oh in the chat alma my friend from uh school welcome <laughs> we're, welcome, we're doing welcome. the top 2022 20, anticipated films okay um, we'll start with my number 10 then. And, um, uh, my number 10 is actually coming out in, I want to say a couple of weeks, The Northmen. Good old Robbie Eggers. Good pick. So, um, yeah, I've seen the trailer. It looks, uh, I've only seen it a couple of times. I didn't get a chance to digest it, but, uh, man, anything Robert Eggers does, I mean... I'm in because I love the lighthouse. Lighthouse was I know you're a big witch guy, Noah. Um, I am. The lighthouse for me was his like uh, the one that and the I lighthouse. connected with the most. They're both. But, oh. Yeah, they're they're both uh, they're both incredible films for me. I, I love both of them a lot. I, I always talk about the witch because I was pretty early on the witch train when it came yeah, out. Yeah, you were. <laughs> yeah, so definitely interested in this one as well. But yeah, uh, no, like the witch before it was cool. <laughs> exactly <laughs> he was ahead of the curve on the witch yeah but uh man it's it looks violent it looks atmospheric and ethan hawk right so uh the hawk. man the hawk is uh back in a big movie so oh man uh, i'll watch yeah. everything with ethan hawk me too um that is my number 10 so yeah it's gonna be epic looking forward to it all right, uh, Spencer, what is what is your number 10? Uh, my number 10 is the psychological horror thriller, Don't Worry Darling, which is going to be directed by Olivia Wilde. Um, and I guess similar to the Jesse Eisenberg one, I'm just I, I'm really excited to see her follow up to Booksmart and, and her transition into this directing realm. Because I, I, I do think that she has a really unique voice that a lot of people don't really give her credit for it um just because of her hollywood persona mm. and I, I don't know i'm also a big florence Pugh guy I love florence Pugh, and uh it's gonna be awesome to see her in like a truly leading role other than midsummer yeah um and to play off of, like an, someone that's not really an actor like harry styles i want to see how much they can extract out of his performance and uh his chops i i don't know i i, I think that's it's gonna be a cool dynamic and I want to see what Harry's got. 
Yeah. This is the weirdest Marvel spin-off show that they've chosen. Yeah. <laughs> Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. Oh, and Gemma yeah. Chan. She's in uh, Eternals as well. <laughs> yeah, it's got a pretty stacked cast. Like, um, Chris Pine is in it too, I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, really? And, oh, I didn't like know Nick Kroll. Wow. All right. So, oh, yeah, Nick Kroll, Chris Pine. There we go. Right there. Wow. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. There, there's some there's some pretty interesting pairings here. Uh, I, I forgot that uh, Kiki Lane is in it, and I'm pretty sure she was... Uh, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure she was in uh, If Beale Street Could Talk. Yes, she was. I, I thought she was pretty phenomenal. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah, I definitely had the uh, Don't Worry Darling on my radar as well. Because oh, it's like the, the yeah. mystery in the 50s and the kind of like that unsettling thing of like the that kind of family in the suburbs. So, yeah. I, I dig it. Yeah, it, I mean, it could come out and just be a complete miss, but there, there is so much intrigue around it that I, I am excited to see how it pans out. Oh, I'm very excited as well. Good choice, good choice. All right, uh, Noah, what's your number 10? <laughs> well, mine is uh, a film in the storied filmography of uh, legendary director Darren Aronofsky and his next oh, yeah. film called The Whale. Um, the Whale will be... Uh, the return to the starring role, the the starring actor, uh, Brendan Fraser. He is making his return as the film's headliner. Uh, it's a film going to be about a uh, a morbidly obese man uh, seeking meaning in his life um, while eating himself to death, uh, being confronted by one of his friends and neighbors, as well as a Christian missionary. Uh, it's a very deep story about meaning, about loss, about life. Uh, it's one that Aaron Ar- uh, that Darren Aronofsky has tackled before in films like uh, Black Swan and The Wrestler and The Fountain, uh, as well as Mother. Uh, very uh, eerie and dark filmography, uh, full of twists and turns. I think this could honestly be uh, incredible, and I and I would love. I can't wait for this follow up to um, to Mother, a film that I also really liked. Oh yeah, I love the mother as well. Yeah, uh, so I think that this one's gonna be gonna be fantastic. Uh, very excited for this one, and excited to see Brendan Fraser as a star yet again. Oh yes, yeah, I had this one on my radar as well, but I was like, I know I'm gonna watch it and probably be amazed by it, but I don't know how much I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, what? I kind of expected you to put it on your list, so you know, I was like, okay, I don't oh, have to okay. put it on mine. <laughs> I guess it is my five. <laughs> but, is it uh, safe to say we're about to enter the the Fraser sauce? The Fraser sauce? I would love to he enter the Fraser sauce. In, uh, he was just in No Sudden Move, the Soderbergh film. Yeah, and, No uh, Sudden Move, this film. Yeah, he he had a he had a small role in that, and he was pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for this one. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. All right. Um, okay. My number nine, I think, may be on your list as well, but. Uh, is the next Scorsese the let me make sure I'm getting this right yeah the killers of the flower moon I assume you guys had this on your radar as well but uh oh yeah, yeah. maybe that is my yeah, yeah. <laughs> just possibly that is my uh number nine and I'm hoping for just like a nice three hour long western epic in the 20s with leo and jesse plum brendan fraser as well oh i didn't even oh, know that. Yeah. <laughs> there you're right the, the, the fraser right. sauce really is happening but um oh man i'm sure every film kid is excited for <laughs> this one so i'm a big western guy i love modern westerns and so oh and you got you got de niro in this as well john lithgow so oh, there's legendary. no way this isn't going to be epic <laughs> to put it lightly but yeah Definitely i'm i'm very very excited for this so yeah um who's next spencer what is your next one uh my next film that i'm pretty excited for is a movie called she said uh directed by maria schrader okay um i, I think it's supposed to come out towards the end of the year but it's based on um the expose of the journalists that actually exposed Harvey Weinstein. Ooh, okay. 
And I, I don't know, like, I know that was a, a big pop culture moment, but I'm actually, I, I'm not familiar with all the, like the um, journalistic work that went into taking this man down, this monster down in his empire. And I, I don't know, I, I think it's going to be really cool to kind of get a, a little behind the scenes peek, even if it's um, dramatized, a, a behind the scenes peek into how this all went down and how all the all the struggles that they had to go through to even um, be taken seriously with their claims um, in, in helping these women too. Uh, it stars Zoe Kazan and uh, Carrie Mulligan as the two main journalists. Um, I think their names are Jody, um, does uh, Jody Cantor and Megan Toohey. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Carrie Mulligan is on a bit of a hot streak right now, and I, I think she pick, she's been picking some really good projects. And I don't think that she would have attached herself to something like this if it wasn't done. Um, if, if it doesn't, if it wasn't written well, uh, and if it didn't hold the integrity of the the actual story itself. All right. Yeah. I I didn't even I haven't heard of this one, but um, man. This seems like a very I, I'm excited for it now because like yeah seeing behind the scenes of how this all went down and I mean it's going to be an important one I think I think uh, a yeah. lot of people are going to be interested in this when it finally gets a bigger shout out to everybody so yeah cool um, Alma says hi no and Spencer big fan <laughs> 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 all right but uh, yeah I hadn't heard of that that uh, seems awesome all right, Noah, number nine. Is it no. me? Yeah, you're number nine. Uh, my number nine is the new film from Possessor director Brandon Cronenberg titled Infinity Pool. Uh, this, uh, of course, Possessor was one of my favorite films from, uh, from uh, I believe it was 2020 when it came out. And... He showed a lot of skill as a director, especially taking a lot of uh, inspiration from his father's work, David Cronenberg, and his uh, his style. And Infinity Pool seems like a very interesting follow-up, uh, starring Mia Goth and Alexander Skarsgård. Uh, very interesting kind of cryptic uh, synopsis about it, talking about a, a couple going on a beach vacation with uh, a sadistic side to it that we don't really know yet. Uh, I think there could be a lot of directions that it could go. I really like the cast. I like the, uh, I like what uh, Brennan Cronenberg could do with that. Uh, and I like that we don't really know much about it so far. I think it could be, um, I think it's gonna be a really interesting one and uh, definitely intrigued to where Brandon goes from, uh, from Possessor and uh, how he attacks another, another story. All right. Yeah, I had not heard about this either. And now it might have even made my top 10 because, yeah, I watched Possessor like a month ago and it was amazing. Definitely my kind of movie. So, yeah, this seems sick. Like a nice mystery, satanic horror sci-fi or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sign me up. And uh, in the IMDb trivia, it said it was rumored that Robert Pattinson was offered the lead role but passed. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, I don't know. Yeah, Maybe Robbie I, I like uh, Alexander Skarsgård. So, oh yeah, I'm that's that's a that. great choice. But yeah, oh man, that is a uh, very exciting. It doesn't have a release date here, so maybe that's one of the ones where it's like eh, questionable. Twenty twenty two. We'll yeah, but, uh, it hasn't been too long since Possessor, so you never know. But I'm glad that it's in the works, and I've seen it on a few anticipated lists. So we'll all right, see. yeah, that's awesome. Oh, I'm very excited for that now as well. All right sick okay number eight uh i have i think a lot of people know about this one it is the latest nightmare from mr jordan peele and it is uh nope love the poster <laughs> <laughs> yep love the poster that's a big yep from me um i mean yeah what do we got to say jordan peele um pff, doesn't really have a synopsis on imdb and uh I don't really know too much of what's going on, and I don't know if I want to. I kind of just want to go in there and see what's happening. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I assume you guys knew about this one as well. But, uh, yeah. yeah, big hype. It may make an appearance Nope. Later. <laughs> it says uh, on IMDb expected around late July 2022, so I feel like this is a 
most likely going to come out this year. And uh, yeah, very, very excited. Poster has me very intrigued. So yeah, glad, glad we don't know anything about it. Yeah. I, I found recently that I've gotten a lot out of movies where I haven't watched the trailer of. So I feel like I'm going to try to like, you know, not actively seek out trailers. If they just so happen to happen upon me. I'll give it a watch, but I, I don't want to go out and like seek them because it's it's been very satisfying going into movies pretty blind. It's um, tough when you work at a movie theater. Yeah, that is a. <laughs> there are trailers playing nonstop, but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, that was my number eight, Spencer. Your number eight, sir. Uh, my number eight. I think I'm gonna go with Knives Out two. All right. Um, I, I, I do love Ryan Johnson and the cast nice is just as stacked as the first one and I was I was really pleasantly surprised with the first Knives Out because um, I don't know when, when people try and write mystery right now or, or like crime capers it, it, it gets really predictable and, um, and, and formulaic but I, I thought the first Knives Out was really kind of a breath of fresh air for the genre and it was able to kind of poke fun at, at itself in many ways and I don't know, I, I just really trust the guy in, in making the sequel. And and I truly believe that he would not have written a sequel if um, if he couldn't make a screenplay that made sense for the story that he had already established. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I Daniel Craig eats up the role of Benoit Blanc. He sure and does. I'm, I'm excited to see the, the other cast of players that he gets to play around with. Of course, The Hawk is making an appearance. The so, Hawk. Like I oh, said yes. before, I'll watch anything with Ethan Hawk. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of excited to see w- what else he can kind of draw from this world that he's created because it was kind of an unexpected hit. Yeah, I agree. I remember I saw it in theaters and I was like, oh, you know, that was a good time. And then uh, one of my brothers just wanted to watch it randomly. He'd never seen it. And I rewatched it. And I was like, wow, this is just like the kind of movie you would want to come out nowadays. Something original, something just so fun with the characters that are just hilarious by the actors that are doing them. So man yeah, yeah like he the characters are are similar to what we've seen before but the, the performances that he extracted out of all of his actors is something that i think only he could do and and the vision that he had um so it, it doesn't really matter how how formulaic or the, or how archetypal archetypical the, the characters that he's playing with is i I've just i really trust his work with the actors and uh what he's going to be able to do with all these talented people yeah i i I'm a big Ryan Johnson guy as well. I mean, I loved Star Wars Episode Eight and love Nice Out, and uh, I trust him. Like his writing is just like he, you can tell he knows what he's doing, and he always has something up his sleeve when you're not expecting it. So, yeah, very very good choice. All right, Knives Out two for Spencer. Noah, number eight. All right, back to me. Uh... I'm very excited for this next one. Uh, There's a lot of question marks beside it because it is his first narrative feature, but this is uh, the next film from the documentarian Joshua Oppenheimer. He's famous for doing documentaries such as The Act of Killing and and, uh, The Look of Silence, or um, was it? Uh, Yeah, The Look of Silence, uh, talking about the the Indonesian genocide from uh, uh, the 1960s. This is his first narrative feature. It's called The End. Uh, it is a, a drama musical set in a uh, post-climate crisis Earth uh, about a family uh, in a, a doomsday bunker. Uh, it stars Tilda Swinton and uh, should be a very interesting first film. Very uh, um, uh, A very weird and interesting take on the... Uh, the end of the world apocalyptic genre, uh, but I trust Joshua Oppenheimer with this one. He his his documentaries are incredible. Um, I'm surprised he hadn't tackled a film uh, a narrative feature before this. But uh, if you if you want to take time to create a golden age musical in 2021, by all means, this one sounds absolutely ridiculous. But I love Tilda Swinton. She's got a lot of amazing roles coming out this year. Uh, and she takes good projects and uh yeah oppenheimer is uh he's incredible i'd highly recommend his documentaries if you haven't seen them before 
And uh, yeah, couldn't be more excited for this one. Eco cinema is always on the rise. And uh, yeah, this one is uh, not going to be a slouch in that genre. So this will be interesting. Oof. Yeah, I had not heard of this one either. Um, I hadn't seen any of the documentaries, but I heard about uh, the act of killing. And I've seen a scene from it, the one near the end uh, in a class one time. And uh, yes, yeah, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> I think you know what scene I'm talking about. I, I definitely know what scene I'm talking about. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this sounds crazy, and I'm definitely in for it. I do love me some environmental catastrophe <laughs> cinema, dystopian future, and uh, dang, that sounds really cool. And George McKay, guy from uh, 1917. 1917. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I was Steven gonna say Green. he he doesn't get enough credit right now because the guy's killing it, and I think he's a really underrated actor in young Hollywood. Yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, Absolutely. glad he's attached to this. All right. And uh, on IMDb here, it says pre-production. So you, you never know. Could be a, you could never be a potential yeah. 2022. Yeah. yeah. But uh, ooh. good choices, Noah. You're picking ones that are like, I, I hadn't even, I guess I didn't do my research well <laughs> enough. I thought I did good research, but no. You're just pulling some, <laughs> pulling some good ones. All right, cool. All right, so the end for Noah. Okay, uh, my number seven. Uh, the trailer came out, I feel like, a month ago, and I hadn't heard about it before. But uh, I am very, very excited for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yes. Have you guys heard of it? That's the the Metaverse A24 oh, film, yes. right? <laughs> oh, yes. It is the um, uh, the multiverse response to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No. <laughs> <laughs> It is going to be the multiverse to watch in 2022. I'll say that. <laughs> multiverse of Madness, step aside. Um, uh, yeah, I am beyond excited for this. The trailer is amazing. I know I just said watching trailers <laughs> going in blind is fun, but like, oh, man. This trailer yeah, this is... this trailer was very entertaining. <laughs> insane, very entertaining itself. And um, the creators of Swiss Army Man, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, Oh, the Daniels. Man. Yes. Dan and Daniel. Um, yeah, this is going to be... It's going to be weird. It's going to be hilarious. But, uh, yeah, I am beyond excited because of they made Swiss Army Man, and if you just think of that kind of, like, I don't know, that, that kind of comedy, that kind of humor that they play with, I think that's going to be amazing for a multiverse film that maybe pokes fun at the current state of multiverses but you never know <laughs> mm. shout, be out, fun. Uh, shout, shout out michelle yo for oh, being of course incredible forever um i do love yeah, michelle awesome yo as well. but uh yeah i am super duper excited for everything everywhere all at once all righty uh spencer <laughs> number seven uh number seven it is making a return to the lists uh, it, I'm placing Killers of the Flower Moon. All right, and all right. like we said before, I don't really know what else needs to be said. It's Scorsese. It's a, a crime drama. Yeah. He, he's got all of his main players. You got, you got your Leo. You got your De Niro. You got some newcomers like Jesse Plemons. Um, and I think it's going to be very mysterious and, and dark and twisted. There's nothing really else to say to say about it. Other than that, I, I am disappointed that for the longest time when Scorsese was kind of... I mean, this has nothing to do with the film, but Scorsese for the longest time was making fun of uh, the development of streaming services. And now one of his highest profile releases is uh, <laughs> only premiering on Paramount Plus and Apple TV. Paramount Plus. It's, it's a little oh, ridiculous no. to me that he's keeping it hidden behind that. Um but yeah yeah i mean oh, western crime scorsese what more has to be said really um yeah yeah awesome and 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 it's been a few years since scorsese has given leo a role that he can just like chew up for him you know <laughs> yeah this could be a leo Sorry. oscar campaign again I, I would it could think. it absolutely could Alrighty. uh noah number seven Number seven for me, uh, this one is going to be uh, the latest film from director Sarah Polly. Uh, it's her adaptation of Miriam Taves' book, Women Talking. 
Uh, Miriam Taves is a fantastic Mennonite Canadian author who has done some incredible work um, uh, dealing, uh, writing stories about women and trauma and women talking is uh, definitely included in that in, in uh, the highest of regard for her uh, for her work and Canadian writing work. Uh, it's a film that's going to talk about a uh, an isolated group of uh, Mennonites in Bolivia who are dealing with uh, the rampant sexual assaults from men within their patriarchal community. Uh, it's uh, I love her work uh, as an author, and I think Sarah Polly is, is a fantastic director to take on this role. Uh, I believe there's going to be another Miriam Taves adaptation this year. I can't remember, but... Uh, this one is getting a lot of buzz because of the amazing cast that's included in it, including Claire Foy and Frances McDormand, yep. uh, Rooney Mara as well. Uh, so definitely having this one on my radar, um, especially as someone who has ties to uh, the Mennonite religion is definitely interesting. Uh, love researching and, and understanding more about the history. Um, of course, my sect comes from the Ukraine not Bolivia, but still, nonetheless, very, very interesting. Uh, couldn't couldn't say anything more about this one. It's going to be great. All right. Yeah, that's a great choice. Again, I hadn't heard about it. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Yeah, what a cast. Rooney Mara, uh, Claire Foy, Francis McDormand, Sheila McCarthy, Canadian legend. Yeah. Um, damn. All right. Great choice. Great choice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's a stack cast. That is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very excited for that one. Sarah Polly's made some really good work. Uh, I believe she did um, uh, Take This Waltz and Stories We Tell to uh, very underrated um, independent films or smaller budget films, uh, really uh, condensed casts and uh, productions. And this one uh, seems to be uh, a little bit more expanded based on the amount of stars in it so very very interested with with how this one gets uh, promoted in the festival scene as well as um one that i'll definitely find some uh, some some promotion in the uh in the awards scene so yeah it, it, very definitely. interested all right awesome okay my number six made a film last year the french dispatch it's looking like a release 2022 for Asteroid City mm. by Wes Anderson. Mm. Plot unknown, rumored to be a love story set in Europe. But um, man, the title, that, oh. It makes the science fiction nerd to me hope there's, you know, some science fiction elements, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, Wes Anderson, dude, this is like the craziest cast you could ever find. Like, Margot Robbie, it's, Tom it's, Hanks, Scarlett Johansson, wow. Adrian Brody, Tilda Swinton, Jeff Goldblum, Brian Cranston, Lee Schreiber, Bill Murray, like my Hoff, Jason Schwartzman, Matt Dillon, Jeffrey Wright, like pfft. okay. You can't forget about Fisher Stevens. Fisher Stevens. Who's Fisher Stevens? I got no idea. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I didn't know if you're serious about it. Okay. <laughs> oh, Tony Revel Revelori. Oh, legend. Um, <laughs> the Grand Budapest fame. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, man, Asteroid City, it's uh, gonna be something. I'm very, very excited. I'm a big, I, I love West. Everyone loves West, so this is gonna be sick. It says expected twenty two, so uh, hopefully that'll be awesome. But, wow. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, Spencer, number six. Uh, the Northman falls at number six for me. Ah, uh, the Northman. Um, I'm also a big Robert Eggers guy. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember Noah pushing me onto The Witch, and it, it, it did kind of change my perspective of horror filmmaking for, forever. So, um, But I don't know. This movie, it, it's obviously not a horror film, um, but it, it, it looks dark and gritty. And it has this scope that I haven't really seen in any of his movies yet. Like, I feel like... Um, the, 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 the filmmaking aspects and, and the budget and the push behind his film has finally caught up to um, his actual vision and, and what he really wants to do. He, I think he finally has access to make the films that he wants to make. Um, and I'm just really excited to see how this pans out. 
the story is going to be gory. It's going to be gritty. Uh, it, he's he's bringing back some of his old collaborators like Anya. And, um, I mean, I, I I would say that he he helped create Anya Taylor Joy's career. And uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> after the ascension that she's had to global superstardom, I'm excited to see her kind of jump back into his world and his style of directing the actors and see what kind of comes out of this film. Yeah. And I mean, Willem Dafoe as well on top of, of course, Ethan Hawke, Nicole Kim, like, yeah. Bjork. Bjork. Oh, yeah. Lots of Bjork back in, in films. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the Northman, I have a feeling it may be on nose list as well. We will just see. Um, okay. Noah, number six. Uh, my number six, <clears throat> uh, this one is definitely going to fly under the radar, but um, uh, it's a, a new film from director Todd Field. I, I discovered Todd Field's uh, uh, filmography last year. Um, I picked up uh, his two films. He, he takes a lot of time in between his films. He, he directed two, uh, uh, two in his time, one called In the Bedroom, which is absolutely fantastic, and one called Little Children, which is also very, very good. He takes a lot of time in between his films. Uh, this one, uh, nonetheless, is going to uh, make a statement as well. It's called Tar. Uh, it's not getting a lot of buzz, but none of his films really do. Uh, it stars Kate Blanchett as a world-renowned uh, musician, uh, coming up on a uh, very major symphony that she'll be creating uh, while dealing with immense pressure and stress and uh, and uh, trauma from uh, from her work and the relationship that she keeps with her young child uh, through a very stressful period in her days. Um, very, very interested in how this film will uh, come together. Uh, uh, Todd Field always brings uh, very, very good casts together and, um, and gets incredible performances out of everyone. Uh, he doesn't make films very often, but when he does, they are always worth talking about and always worth uh, writing about and discovering any uh, hidden meanings or concepts surrounding his filmmaking. Uh, all of his films always talk about... Uh, relationships in one way shape or form uh, whether it be strained or broken relationships so he's definitely got his work cut out for him with this concept and the cast that he has attached to it also should bring a lot of positives to the hype surrounding it so definitely very interested with this one all right another one i had not heard of <laughs> me too man all right yeah, that sounds awesome. I yeah didn't really know of. Highly Todd recommend, Field, so. uh, highly recommend Todd Field's films to anyone who hasn't seen them. All right, uh, very awesome. very well put together films. But yeah, Kate Blanchett and Mark Strong, another notable name. Yes, but, uh, Kate Blanchett had a great year last year. So. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, another one that you're bringing that I am now very excited for. Okay, uh, my turn next, and um, I am a very, very big fan of Mr. Damien Chazelle. Mm. La La Land was <laughs> amazing when we were in high school. As theater kids, it was uh, one of the greatest. Uh, it, it was just so fun. Every day we go to theater and just sing La La Land or it was it was honestly a joker moment for a lot of people <laughs> it was <laughs> it was but um uh oh i love all and i mean i he had, in my opinion in my eyes he has not missed i loved first man as well and whiplash i mean could be debatably the best from him so like babylon slated to come out um uh, late 2022 possibly early 2023 uh yeah I'm very excited for it. Very, very excited for it because, yeah, as I said, just the man didn't miss. And uh, it's rumored to be a, a period piece set in Hollywood with Brad Pitt, Tobey Maguire, Margot Robbie, and Olivia Wilde. Like, 
Yeah. Sounds they, like a banger waiting to happen. <laughs> exactly. Damien Chazelle directing a period piece with Brad Pitt, Tobey Maguire, Margot Robbie. I feel like, yeah. Again, don't know too much about it, but uh, Damien Chazelle's movies are always about somebody with, like, an extreme passion for something. Or these characters that will go any lengths to get what they want. And uh, it makes them so interesting. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen here. But, yeah. Super, super excited for Babylon. Okay, that was my number five. And uh, now, Spencer, your number five. At number five, I'm, I might take some shots for uh, ranking this so high. But I am a sucker for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Of course, of course. Mm-hmm. And at number five, I'm placing Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness. All right. Because uh, what... What else is there to say? I listen. I, I know there's been a big discussion about Marvel, um, and including between us three about if Marvel is cinema or not. And um, frankly, like th- these big kind of tentpole films that, that are trying to serve as like event films, I, I'm I'm all here for it. You know, as long as they're not destroying uh, audiences from from flooding the theaters to other very important films to some of which that we've brought up today i I, i'm all for it um i think that with uh i'm not going to spoil spider-man but some of the stuff that they've set up has has set a a film that is really going to be something that we haven't really seen in the marvel cinematic universe while still having all the familiar things that we know and love and also sometimes hate about the mcu yeah. And I'm also excited to see uh, Wanda's char- character development in this film and her inclusion in Doctor Strange is, um, I don't know, it, it, she was very impressive in WandaVision and, and, and the way that they developed her character into something way more than what she was in um, Phase 2 and 3 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She really is one of the coolest characters in the MCU now and to see her go toe-to-toe with Doctor Strange on some kind of multiversal adventure is something that I'm really looking forward to. I, I don't know, 2022, like you said, is going to be the year of the multiverse. And <laughs> I think these are like the perfect characters to explore this concept and, and have some fun. And I don't know, I'm, get, I'm getting very excited about the potential for a lot of cameos uh, from my childhood. Um, even if it's just fan service, you know? Yep. Uh, maybe uh, a little Hugh Jackman action. Oh. I don't know, maybe. I would love maybe. that. But uh, I mean, yeah. Everyone's going to go see it, no doubt. <laughs> but uh, it's... Uh, Marvel's so crazy because it's like Endgame was the biggest event in the world and they just had to up it somehow. They had to up the stakes of literally half the world being dusted. <laughs> and now this is happening. It's just, it's just crazy that this is happening. That's what I said about like Endgame and the No Way Home. It's just crazy that this is happening on the screen. <laughs> right now oh and I, di- I didn't even mention the most important part too sam raimi is making his return to a marvel oh. title and I, like i could not be more yeah. excited even, i even though the last thing that we got was bully mcguire that that was <laughs> iconic i agree that sam raimi is the reason why this is why i'm more excited for this than i initially would be so yeah yeah that's uh it yeah. everyone's gonna go see it and uh we're all gonna have a good time no doubt but uh, all right, cool. Doctor Strange, it is for number five for you. Okay, Noah, number five for you. Uh, my number five. Um, looking at the next film from Luca Guadagnino called Bones and All. It's an adaptation of Camille and uh, DeAngelis's book Bones and All. Uh, it's going to be a road movie uh, about the first time meeting between uh, a young woman played by uh, Taylor Russell and a young man played by Timothy Chalamet. Uh, it's going uh, to be a period, well, not a, not, not a very long period piece, but uh, set in the 1980s um, <clears throat> in uh, the heart of Reagan era, United St- in the Reagan era, United States, uh, focusing on the, uh, the relationship that blossoms between them and the stories that they tell. I've heard good things about the book, but I've also never been disappointed by a film from luca uh, especially uh his more his more recent films such as suspiria and call me by your name 
as well as The Bigger Splash and I Am Love. Big fan of all of those. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what uh, he does with this work and seeing him return with uh, Timothy Chalamet, adding in uh, yep. adding in uh, uh, people like Michael Stuhlbarg, yet again, Mark Rylance, and Chloe Sevigny. Uh, something I'm very, very excited for. Also, um, uh, Francesca Scorsese, the daughter of Martin Scorsese, is in the cast as well. So that's oh really exciting. wow, cool. Um, so yeah, that's one that I'm very excited for. Uh, I'll always gonna clamor to the theater to see a film from Luca. So definitely not one that I want to miss. Yeah. Damn, I completely forgot about this movie. This is gonna be a good one. It was close to being on my list. I, I did not put it on mine, but uh, we're in the Shalama sauce, not the sauce, Shalama era. Shalamira. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Luca <laughs> bringing Shalamay back. I mean, phew. yeah. He, he never left. He never left. He never really did. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Very excited for that one as well. Very good choice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was all our number fives. Okay. So uh, number four. And um, um, everybody loved Spider-Man No Way Home. It had pretty universal praise. I think Noah, you liked it a bit less than most mm -hmm. other people. Uh, I, I, I had fun. I had fun. <laughs> but um, uh, I think, in my opinion, the best Spider-Man movie is still uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I will agree with you there. Yeah, I Me think Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the uh, most hype Marvel of the year, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's, it'll be on your guys' list, but, uh, I think it is going to be, like, ugh. there's, there's, nothing bad can be said about Into the Spider-Verse, and now that everybody's seen that it can be done, and to the extent that it can be done, like, oh, sky's the limit for this, so, I am super, super excited for Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, it's, uh, that's one that's definitely going to be on my radar. It was close to a, an honorable mention for me. Yeah. Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. Sorry. Forgot to mention. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's going to be sick. We all know it. Um, yeah. Super excited for that. Spencer, you're number four. Well, I, I'm uh, going to piggyback off you because I also have Across the Spider-Verse uh, at number right, four. Right. Um, it is, uh, I mean, Into the Spider-Verse is the best Spider-Man movie, if not a top two Spider-Man movie ever. Um, and this continuation, it looks like it's going to build on so much with the introduction of like Oscar Isaac as Spider-Man 2099. Um, and, uh, I can't remember if Haley Steinfeld played Spider Gwen. Yep. Or not in the first one, but I, I don't know. If if not, she's returning. I I'm just excited to see all all these new versions of Spider Man and Spider Woman, um, but also go to all the respective worlds. Like Spider Man 2099 is one of my favorite Spider Man, um, and for Miles to be kind of thrust into this futuristic universe and have to find his way out and and deal with all these other spider egos is going to be something really cool um and i don't know that the film is in good hands with uh lord and miller I, I think that the writing style is, is really unique and special and uh they they should have been handed they shouldn't have been taken off of the han solo movie that's for sure oh definitely um yeah i was just gonna make a joke about how i am gonna walk out if Nicolas Cage doesn't return but in the trivia section in IMDB it says according to producer Christopher Miller Nicolas Cage is confirmed to return as Spider-Man oh Mom. thank goodness so, <laughs> all right <laughs> all right let's, I'm moving that up my list now Spider -Ham. let's hope for a Spider-Ham cameo as well Spider-Ham cameo as well yeah but uh, oh boy yeah Spider-Verse or across the Spider-Verse. You can't just call Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse Spider-Verse now because there's going to be, you have to say, into the Spider-Verse. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I mean. All right. Uh, now it is time for number four for Noah. 
No, I'm I'm noticing uh, there's no uh there's no Marvel movies on your what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> just, Didn't expect that. What the, whole, what the whole top three is, man. Like, come on. Oh, sure, uh, sure, sure. Okay. You have Morbius <laughs> right up there. Oh, Morbius. Don't spoil my number one, guys. Okay, like, sorry, sorry, my bad. <laughs> well, un- unless it gets pushed back, of course. But, oh yeah. Um, my number four uh, is going to be the next film in the career of one R. It's going to be... Oh, sorry. Can you uh, repeat Joaquin... the uh, director name? It cut out for me. Uh, Ari Aster's next film, Disappointments Boulevard. Oh, yeah. Uh, it should be a very interesting uh, uh, next uh, addition to the rising star of the horror genre. Uh, I am a humongous fan of the uh, of his previous films, Hereditary and Midsummer. Uh, I'm also very excited to see Joaquin Phoenix get to use his uh, skills in one of his films. It's also got a pretty solid cast. It includes Nathan Lane, Amy Ryan, um, as well as Michael Gandolfini is in the cast as well. Um, it seems like it's going to be a really interesting look at uh, wealth and greed. Uh, excited to see how he tackles more of a suburban horror than he has tackled in the past. Most of the time, uh, very... Uh, small scale films that he's done uh, in different places uh, looking at uh, yet another family should be interesting uh, for an extended look hopefully this one comes out this year I believe it's supposed to hopefully it doesn't get pushed back too long uh, so yeah this one uh, I, I can't see myself not seeing it in theaters and getting the spookers spooked out of me so this one will definitely be uh be on my radar no matter what very excited yeah i agree i uh i was debating putting on my list and uh i wasn't sure if it was going to be 2022 as well so i kind of just nudged it out of the list but yeah this is very very exciting (laughs) um all right another good choice all right uh back to me i guess number three um also broadway legend uh Broadway legend Patty Lapone is supposed to be in it, so I'm very excited Ooh, about that. All right. Okay. Uh, my Sorry, number three. Just... I know this has probably been the most talked about movie at work recently, and probably amongst uh, many a people. It looks like on the IMDb popularity, it is it is six. But uh, I think I have a coworker, and he's like, "This is going to be the best Batman movie." I'm calling it. It's going to be the best Batman movie of all time. I'm like, you know, that's pretty bold. The other ones are pretty good, but uh, everyone's excited for the Batman. Everyone's excited for the Batman. Like, it's not Marvel, Noah. I feel like, are you more excited for the Batman than any Marvel movie next year? <laughs> uh, yes. It, it yeah. looks the most like a movie, you know? It, it, <laughs> looks like, it looks like there were actual, you know, stunts and set pieces and uh it, it looks very well put together uh the trailers uh do it justice i like the aesthetic it's going for uh, very very excited for this one i love the cast uh yeah this this one should uh it should be on everyone's radar even if you're not a massive comic book film fan it's easily gonna be uh gonna be good yeah yeah i agree and uh matt reeves at the helm so uh we're in good hands we're in good hands and i mean i know spencer and i we're we're big robbie p fans so of course uh, i oh man i'm so excited to see what he brings and uh, batman just has so many different iterations and uh yeah like you were saying the trailer is just it feels so gritty it feels so real when he's like in those fight scenes it's not just cgi non-stop it's actually just robert Pattinson in a fit of rage um uh, it reminds me a lot of like the dark knights trailer compared to like a batman v superman trailer yeah like it, it feels like they're really going for a like a true production that they're using like stunts and cars and everything it look it feels real when when the when the actors are doing stuff it feels like a real film so i'm very excited for that yeah and uh 
it's just it's so nice to see that the they're not just trying to like DCEU up everything and that they yes. can still go back to the more the Dark Knight feel, which this definitely feels a lot more Dark Knight than it does Batman v Superman or anything in that DC verse. So hopefully it's just like Fact. not attached to anything <laughs> in the DCEU. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I like how it, it is detached from everything and I, I hope it stays that way. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I mean, oh, two hour, 55 minutes. That's amazing. You'll love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's so many movies nowadays, like when we're making the schedule of the theater, it's like, oh, every movie's so long. It's like two and a half hours. It's hard to fit everything in. But like, this is the kind of movie you want to be like, I we could all watch this for like five hours and be thoroughly yeah. entertained. So absolutely. Oh, uh, man. Every, uh, very, very excited for the Batman. Um, okay. Spencer. Uh for my number three, I have uh, Jordan Peele's Nope that we were discussing before. And obviously, we, we don't really know anything about it. Nope. Um, but Jordan Peele as a filmmaker, he's he's carved out a niche for himself where he's becoming one of the most exciting filmmakers working today. And he's making these like accessible mainstream puzzle films in, in a sense, or like almost like puzzle horror films that kind of have you on the edge of your seat trying to figure out what's going on and putting it all together at the end. And even when you leave the theater, you're still trying to figure out what's going on and pick up on all the subtle references um, and creative choices that, that he introduced into his films. Um, and, and I'm really excited for this one because I think the, uh, the cast list is, is much more stacked than, or maybe not much more snack, stacked, but uh, I like a lot of the actors in it. Um, yeah, definitely. He's bringing back Daniel Kaluuya. Of course. Obviously. Um, I, I mean, I, I think he, he should be credited with kind of kickstarting Daniel's career, even though he was in a lot of films before that. Um, he really gave him like mainstream recognition with Get Out. Uh, love Kiki Palmer. Uh, yeah, she's kind great. of a Disney Channel legend. And I'm excited to see her step into um, a more mainstream filmmaking, uh, especially kind of like a genre piece like this. And my boy Stephen Yoon is kind of a young legend. Oh, yes. Um, coming out of the walking dead I, I was a big walking dead fan back in the day and uh to see him blossoming in, into the actor that we all knew that he could be and like him getting the chances that he's getting is just um uh, it's amazing to see because uh, he does bring a lot of depth um to his characters and he also has a very interesting perspective um coming from like a, a traditionally uh korean american family seeing him as a leading man is, is really refreshing um, with the perspective that he brings to a lot of his roles. He just has a very different acting style than a lot of uh, um, leading men that we have today. Uh, but also another honorable mention, though, is uh, Barbie Ferreira is in this movie, and uh, she plays Cat on Euphoria, and she was definitely okay. one of the standout characters in the first season, and it's kind of sad that they're, they're kind of cutting down her her role in the second season because I'm, I'm a fan of that show and I'm, I'm a fan of her character. Um, so I'm excited to see her have the opportunity to kind of step out from um, the euphoria curtains like some of the other cast members have, have gotten to and, and really flex her acting muscles and show us what she's got. Yeah, I, I have not seen euphoria, but uh, heard nothing but good things. Okay, yeah, nope. Very exciting. Okay, uh, Noah, number three. Yes. <clears throat> yes, we've talked about uh, my number three already. It's uh, oh, Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> the only crossover one yeah. so far, Noah, <laughs> on your list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't worry, there will be another one. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, very excited for uh, the next in Scorsese's repertoire. I was a, I was a massive fan of... Uh, his his uh, his last decade, his his twenty tens. Um, I think it's one of the strongest decades from any filmmaker with uh, Silence, The Irishman, and um, The Wolf of Wall Street. I think all three stand out in their own ways. I think it was an absolutely banger uh, decade for him, and I'm excited to see how he kicks this one off, uh, going back to his early two thousands roots by bringing together. Uh, uh, by bringing Leo back into the mix and setting it in the 1920s will be really interesting. Uh, there's not really much else you can say. It's just going to be a very uh, a very stellar cast 
with what I can only assume will be a very intricate story centered around crime. Feels like a, uh, a noir western. So yeah, no no question. Very excited for this one. Oh yes, no doubt about it. Okay, cool. Um, I think I know what your other one's gonna be now. Just a just a hunch. The yeah, other yeah, yeah. Most likely. <laughs> okay. Um, my top two, I feel like, are a little uh, more niche, and I'm happy to say that. Uh, my my second one, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It it, it was at Sundance. I did not get a chance to see it, but uh, I heard about it, and um, it is by the filmmakers Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson. They are some uh, sci-fi. They start off as like low-budget sci-fi guys with some high-concept sci-fi movies with uh, some of their most notable ones being The Endless and Synchronic, which had Anthony Mackie, Anthony Mackie, and Jamie Dorian. But um, all I've heard nothing but good things for their movie. That's called Something in the Dirt. It's uh, yeah, just at Sundance. It is about. Two neighbors, they witness a supernatural event and they begin documenting it. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I've heard nothing but pretty good things. And, uh, I mean, their kind of career is the one I would love to have. They just grew up making sci-fi movies together. And, uh, yeah, I am stoked for this movie. It is definitely my kind of movie. So, uh, yeah, that's my number two. Have either of you guys heard of it? That's very exciting. I have yeah, not. I hadn't heard of it. All right. Nice. No, I hadn't heard of it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if it'll even get, like, a, a theatrical release where we are at all, but uh, I'm going to find a way to watch it, and I'm, uh, yeah, super excited for it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was my number two. Uh, Spencer, your turn for your number two. My number two is, of course, Lord Damien's next film babylon which we ah, talked about before all righty um i think you articulated it perfectly damien doesn't miss he, he just simply doesn't I'll, I'll watch anything that man puts out um and like we said before the cast is stacked I, margot robbie in uh in the leading role is just going to be electric um she is one of the, the best leading women in hollywood right now and i wish people would give her a chance to like play some like, like more roles like i tanya where she kind of has to delve into some darkness um and some some kind of ugliness uh in, in her work where like i, I don't know because like martin score says he kind of casted her as uh the wolf of wall street's girlfriend and wife and she kind of got typecasted as that that type of character for for the rest of the 2010s and I, I don't know if it's going to be in this movie, but I, I'm always excited to see her in, in a leading role. And, and her surrounded by Brad Pitt and, and Toby is, is going to be really exciting. I, I'm all here for a Toby comeback. Yeah. I don't know what he's got. We got a Brendan to, but... Fraser sauce and a Toby sauce. Yeah. Toby. He's got to figure it out. Um, but then also, I'm looking at the credits here. Um, Justin Hurwitz is doing the music again. And... Oh. There we yeah, go. you know, he, he he did all the music for La La Land and and uh, and Whiplash, and I'm sure he he helped out with the score for for First Man. I, I I'm not I'm not big into like film scores necessarily, but he's definitely one of my my favorite composers. Um, you, you can really you can really feel how much um, his music like affects the filmmaking as well and the style of the film, which not a lot of uh, composers can say that they can do that right now, to be honest. Yeah. So. Right. And I'm also excited for, for Damien to kind of dive back into stuff that he's a little bit more familiar with because maybe a period drama film um, set in like the golden age of Hollywood and stuff, um, that might not be um, his realm necessarily, but it's it's something that he's obviously passionate about, which could connect to um, his passion in, in Whiplash and the passion that you could feel on La La Land, which is something that I was missing from First Man. Like, I really love First Man as a film, and and uh, obviously I love Ryan Gosling, and uh, that film was really well put together and it served its purpose. But it just was not as strong um, to me as his other two films because it felt like he really had something to say, and it was his whole vision um, in Whiplash and La La Land. So I'm excited to have him return to uh, something that he's really passionate about or a world that he's really passionate about, and that he can kind of inject his own vision and aesthetics into it. All right, yeah, completely agree. Cannot wait. 
And again, it says expected beginning of 2023, but ah, uh, could be end of 22, 22. We'll see. Um, okay. He likes cool. the December releases. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, number two, Babylon for Spencer. All right, Noah, your number two. Yes. Uh, my number two is the next film in the story, uh, the storied filmography of one of my favorite directors of all time, Terrence Malick. It's called The Way of the Wind. It is his long-awaited Jesus film. Uh, it'll be a. Uh, uh, it's going to be an anthology of several moments from the life of Jesus Christ. It'll be told in the Terrence Malick style, incredibly dreamlike, incredibly poetic. Um, if anyone knows anything about Terrence Malick's films, he is incredibly patient with the way he films anything. Uh, his use of long takes, his use of score, his uh, vast production designs are all really well put together, all have uh, underlying meaning. Uh, in his last film, um, uh his uh well his last couple of films specifically uh, song to song a hidden life and the tree of life all uh longer but uh nonetheless incredibly beautiful films um that touch on uh a hu human's connection to nature and i'm sure this one will be uh the connection that uh, uh jesus christ had with uh, nature and the world around him as well as uh, showing us a side of his filmmaking that we haven't before. So anytime that Terrence Malick wants to bless us with a new film, I will never stand in his way. I will always go to see it. It's got a pretty good fine, uh, pretty good cast so far, including uh, Mark Rylance, Joseph Fiennes, uh, Giza Horig, um, very good. Ben Kingsley uh, was in there. Uh, should be a very good epic uh, so I will never I will never not see a Terrence Malick film in theaters as long as the man continues to release no question it'll be uh, on the top of my list to go see alrighty wonderful choice I too do enjoy me some Malick I definitely have not seen as many of you but uh, man the ones I've seen absolutely amazing so yeah this is a this is a very Noah movie this is a very, very Noah movie. This is a very Noah movie. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm very excited for it as well. It should be awesome. And, I, and I'm glad, like, now that you've shown me so much of Terrence Malick, I'm excited to, like, see this in movie theaters if I can uh, find a showing. Um, yeah, all right. Definitely. That is number 10 through 2. And my number 1 is, of course... Minions, The Rise of Gru. Yes, Can't same. Say enough for same. those little yellow bunches of joy. <laughs> um, I absolutely. My number one the from last year was uh, Sing Two. So uh, Sing Two. We're, oh, we're still playing it at the theater, man. <laughs> oh, I gotta go time. see it again. <laughs> oh, again, right. the seventh time. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, dude, I hate the Minions movie so much. Um, my number one is from probably my favorite director. And uh, he has two movies next year. And uh, hopefully this one comes out. It was expected to come out uh, 2021, but it did not. But we will likely get the next Taika Waititi film, Next Goal Wins, in 2022. And uh, uh, Ooh. I... Uh, yeah, he's my favorite director. Uh, what We Do in the Shadows, one of my favorite movies of all time. Boy is also one of my favorite movies of all time. And uh, it's, it feels like, I don't know if you guys knew the plot or anything. It's like a, it feels like a Ted Lasso where the historically horrible American Samoa soccer team who suffered the worst loss in World Cup history, 31-0 to zero versus Australia in 2001. It's kind of <laughs> Michael Fassbender comes in there. And he's going to be the uh, the spark that ignites the uh, American Samoa soccer team. And uh, oh. I don't know if it's going to be a mockumentary or if it's just going to be kind of like um, uh, just a, I don't know, quirky adventure like Ted Lasso. Sport. But, yeah. uh, man, I, I'm so excited. It's just oh. his movies are always, like, short and sweet, and they're just 
oh, he is. I think what we do in the shadows is probably the funniest movie of all time, in my opinion. And um, uh, I am. I was so excited for this in 2021. It did not come out, but uh, I am beyond excited to see what he has to do next because the way he makes movies, he just brings so much joy to them. Like they're just such happy movies that he makes, and his movies make me smile. So. I am very, very excited for Next Goal Wins. I don't know if you guys uh, knew that was going to come out this year, but uh, yeah. That I is did my it. number one. That is my number one. Um, he definitely uh, has one of the most unique voices in Hollywood right now. Yeah, I'm so happy that he's like getting the chances that he does now. So The, the guy recovered from Green Lantern. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, now he is literally making some of the biggest movies of all time. So yeah, there we have it. Um yeah, I love Taika Waititi. Anything he does, I will watch, no matter what, and my number one. All right. Uh, Spencer, I know what your number one is. <laughs> I, mean, I believe we've already discussed it. What, what else What else could it be? We, we've been waiting for this movie for over a decade, and that is, in the, and when it finally releases this year, I think we're all going to rejoice in theaters, and that is Avatar 2. Yes. You know. Dude, I James can't. Cameron, his vision is just unlike anything else. And I hope they bring back 3D because, like, people don't like to go to 3D cinemas anymore. You always see I'm, that I'm, there's more tickets sold for the non-3D showings, and it's a crime, really. It's a crime. It is a crime. No, it is not Avatar 2. It is, <laughs> of course, the Batman. The Batman. Yeah. Even before, when there was rumors of his casting, I will always stand by this, that Robert Pattinson is, is going to be the definitive Batman portrayal for a, at least a few decades. He's going to surpass all of the other Batman. Mark my words. I haven't even seen what? the film. I've only watched the trailers. I've only read all the, the, the nerdy fan theories and all this stuff. And I'm going to fanboy out here for a second because this is the man that's going to take us into the next generation of Batman. And I, I, I'm all here for it. it like, like Noah said, it, it looks... It looks like it could be on, on par with the Dark Knight, but I also like how, how different it is going to be than the Dark Knight. Whereas, like, the Dark Knight felt like a gritty uh, police crime caper. Whereas this one, it, it has all those elements, but it has these really important elements to the character of Batman, of like, of his gothic portrayal, um, this rageful darkness. Um, I think it's just it's the the perfect blend of like what we loved with the Dark Knight, and what we love with like Keaton's iteration and, and like the comic book nature of the character. It, it looks like it could be finally the perfect fusion between the two of them, and and I'm all here for it. And I also think that this is the the best cinematic bat suit that we we have ever received because I'm a sucker oh, yeah. for it is. Uh, the Batman oh. Arkham series, and it looks like they just ripped it right out of that game. The Which fighting is style okay. is directly from the critically acclaimed Arkham City. And it, fans have been asking for this for years. You know, like gritty hand-to-hand -hand combat where you see Batman breaking these criminals' bones to a pulp. And and it's not obstructed by like the shaky cam of Christopher Nolan's filmmaking or like the sweeping wide shots and of Zack Snyder trying to be flamboyant in his camera movement. Um, no disrespect to Zack Snyder, but you know th this. This looks like it's Matt Reeves is trying to direct a movie that is made for Batman fans because he is a Batman fan. Oh yeah, he he understands the detective nature of the character. We're finally going to get a Batman that is an equal, both equally a, a bruising uh, force of nature, as well as like a smart, intelligent detective. And I'm all here for it. Yeah, I uh, end of rant. I agree. <laughs> You're the second person I know who swears that this is going to be the best Batman of all time. It is. It has all the making. <laughs> it does have a good recipe for success. So um, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, understandably, you're number one. I get it. I, w uh, I will gladly fight anyone after this movie comes out if 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 they do disagree with my take. <laughs> Maybe right. I'll disagree with my take. Maybe I'll see it and I'll hate it. But I, I, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah. So there, there is a lot riding on it, and uh, I just, ugh. 
it still haunts me the disappointment we felt after walking out of Justice League, Spencer. So, yes, <sighs> we, <laughs> we got to keep our hopes in check. But uh, man, oh, it's the disappointment was real. Yeah, that was. I I still I I remember that disappointment so vividly. Us standing in the subway station, just trying to justify <laughs> anything good about it, and we just realized it was. Um, uh... We just realized that we threw away <laughs> two and a half hours of our lives that we are never going to get back. Yeah. That was... Thank you, Joss Whedon. <laughs> a tragic you moment pig. in my life. Okay. Yeah, Batman. The hype is real. Okay, Noah, I think I know what your number one is too. But uh, why, do you, why don't you give us the reasons why you are very excited for... The North, man. Yeah. How could it be? How could it be anything else for me? Um, I I love horror films, and the the new generation of horror films has been defined by a few directors, including James Wan, who has sort of codified the big budget uh, studio horror film, but as well as the more muted and patient. Uh, independent style of horror films or the A24 style of horror films uh, brought forth by directors like Robert Eggers and uh, Ari Aster and The North Man while probably not a traditional horror film his style that he's brought forth uh, from his old films and putting them into a dark and uh, gothic Viking noir uh a period piece that I, I couldn't be more excited for uh if i tried uh, especially because he'll be funding his inevitable nosferatu film with this oh, so uh, wow I'm excited for that um assuming that he ends up making it but uh at it's the end of the happen. day this th- this one i am very very excited for no matter what it's got a great cast. It's got a great... Uh, I love the vibe of it. I have not seen the trailer. I do not plan on seeing the trailer. Don't watch it. Uh, Don't watch it. It's one that I'm going to that, that I'm going to be anticipating uh, very closely uh, until it's released. Very excited. You could depict the it's most Noah top two movies. A Terrence Malick film. <laughs> a and Terrence a Malick Eggers film. film. And an Eggers film. Those are like... You say those two filmmakers, I think of you right away. Every time I hear those two filmmakers, I think of you <laughs> right away. So, um, uh, I, it, yeah. the Robert Eggers will always be attached to a memory of uh, wanting to go to the movie theater when The Witch was coming out because I had heard some buzz about it. And in the same car, uh, a friend at the time uh, uh, did not want to go see The Witch, but instead wanted to go see uh, Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates. <laughs> Oh, and, uh, we, <laughs> it's okay. We did not, you can you can name drop them here. Uh, that, that would be uh, my my old buddy. That's Alex. okay. Um, uh, we didn't end up going to the movie theaters that day because um, I was not going to sit through Adam Devine and uh, Zac Efron having antics for an hour and a half. But they needed wedding dates. You can't go to a wedding without a date. Wedding dates so bad, you know. <laughs> So yeah, um, def- definitely not a, a great memory, but uh, definitely a very good film. So yes, uh, th- what was the witch? Uh, so I'm very excited for um, uh, for the Northman, no matter what. All right. The only way this movie does not live up to the hype, Noah, is if they don't have a scene that that rivals the seagull scene from the lighthouse. There there has to be something of equal quality to that. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's just a given. Yeah, of course. There will be. No doubt. No doubt. Robert Eggers is a filmmaker where you're just like, you know you're in good hands. Like, mm. We're skeptical for some of the other films on the, but like, there's no way this is bad. There's just no, no. way. There, there can't be. It's impossible. But uh, yeah, oh, those are some good lists. We had pretty uh, diverse list overall. And uh, yeah, mm. that was awesome. Uh, yeah. My number one next school wins. Spencer, the Batman. Noah, the Northman. <laughs> uh, all right. 
yeah, it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. Uh, here are some other ones that are like I'm decently excited for. And then I have a few that are like high, re- big releases, but like I don't really care as much. But um, I mean, Thor Love and Thunder is as well Taika Waititi. So uh, I have to be excited for it as well. And uh, I mean, yeah, Ragnarok that, be was a of breath fun. of fresh air in the MCU. Um, it is like super like CGI shtick and everything, but it had the Taika Waititi humor and uh that kind of went through and i feel like it when had I... a charm. exactly it had a charm and i think a lot of people who didn't know taika waititi but they knew the mcu and everything they were like oh wow that was super original and super fun like thor is so cool now but like uh oh that was taika waititi yeah he he revitalized the character and uh i think thor love and thunder is going to be a good time so i'm excited for that um we also have two video game movies that are a little sillier but the mario movie and the sonic movie are both coming out this week. <laughs> and honestly me and my siblings we played the sonic games a lot and i enjoyed sonic the hedgehog quite a bit uh i don't care what anybody says jim carrey as dr eggman was iconic <laughs> and uh mm-hmm. i'm excited for that and um the mario movie is just the craziest thing that's going to happen this year and uh i'm all here for it <laughs> i think they're gonna be very silly um one other one that didn't quite make my list because i'm not sure if it's going to uh come out this year but there's a movie called white noise it's noah bomback's next film oh very nice. and, uh, i'm a big fan of noah bomback i love 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 the mayor witch stories probably a little more than marriage story but marriage stories is amazing as well but uh yeah next movie is called white noise it says expected 2022 so uh you never know still could be a 2022 release but it has adam driver don Cheadle, uh jody turner smith and uh yeah andre 3000 is in oh. it there you go. but uh man uh the the way he just has the he has the most natural feel out of like any filmmaker it's just so uh I don't know. It's hard to describe, but uh, I am very, very excited for Noah Baumbach's next movie. I'll watch anything he does. Um, uh, yeah, it says, follows a year of the life of Jack Gladney, a professor who has made his name by pioneering the field of Hitler studies. So, uh, wow. yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> who knows what's going to happen there? Did you guys have that on your radar at all? Or? Not really. No. no. But yeah. Although, I'll, I'll say this about Noah Baumbach, though. He, he's got to pick a, a different muse sometimes than Adam Driver. Because, listen, <laughs> I love Adam. But every time every time I watch a Noah Baumbach movie these days, I, I, I can't shake this jarring feeling that he, his fascination with Adam Driver is just because he's so much like himself or this version <laughs> of himself that Noah Baumbach wants to be. <laughs> it's very jarring. <laughs> If Adam Driver was not such a good actor, then it, it would be like, okay, he's 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 trying to direct actors uh, in roles that he wished that he could have played. You know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that, that's that's a, a personal one. take. It's not going to stop me from watching the movie, but yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> very excited for that. Uh, another one uh, by Richard Linklater, which is expected in twenty twenty two. Apollo ten and a half. Um. Yeah, I uh, don't know too much about it, but uh, coming-of-age yeah. story set in the suburbs of Houston centered around the Apollo 11 moon landing. Um, uh, I mean, it's Link later, so you got to be excited. It is a Netflix film, which is mm. interesting. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of a, a space-themed Link later movie, and, uh, man, I'm a big space movie guy, and uh, this seems awesome. So, Did you have this on your radar, Noah? Uh, yeah, I, I looked at it a little bit. Um wasn't too impressed with uh, Linklater's last film, uh, but uh, I'm always always got him in my radar. I like the cast a lot, um, and I know that at the same time that he's doing this, he's he's working on a uh, like a twenty year uh, like epic coming of age yet again. Uh, so I, I'm I'm keeping that in my back burner as well. But right. uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll watch it when it comes out. Okay. Um, a couple others I have. Uh, Men by Alex Garland. I have that one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Also coming out. Here, let me pull it up real quick. Garland. I don't really know the plot. I just 
saw it was Alex Garland, and I was like, okay, I'm in. Do you know anything about it, Noah? Uh, all only that uh, it's about Jesse Buckley um, uh, going on a vacation after the death of her ex-husband, but that's about it. All right. Yeah, I guess uh, that it's is been exactly kept pretty quiet. So, yeah, that one's definitely on my list. Yeah, it says dra- genres are drama, horror, and sci-fi. It's an A24 movie, so like. Ex Machina was crazy. I absolutely love Ex Machina, so very excited. Are you a uh, Annihilation guy too? Oh, very uh, big I Annihilation. Pre- I prefer guy. Annihilation. Uh, I love Annihilation. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, are you not an Annihilation fan? No, I I, I love Annihilation. I, I'm just I'm really high on uh, Ex Machina still. Oh, me too. Me too. I don't know which one I like, but I I love them both. Like I'll watch any. High high concept, philosophical sci-fi movie. That's my, that's my shindig. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, very excited for that as well. I, um, I've got a I've got a few that I'm looking forward to as well. Um, sure. That yeah. I just didn't put on my list. The next one I wanted to talk about actually, uh, it'll kind of segue into yours. Um, because yeah, the director of You Were Never Really Here, Leanne Ramsey. Has a movie called mm. Polaris or Polaris? Yes. Yeah. Did you I have heard that about that one on your radar as well? So I know you're a big uh, fan. It was of on that. my radar, but I didn't add it here. So yeah, I love Lynn Ramsey. I love her yeah. work. Um, yeah, I hope uh, I hope she works with Johnny Greenwood again because one of the best things about You Were Never Really Here was the incredible score that came with it, um, and the incredible performances. So yeah, she she's uh, she's amazing. Oh, hopefully she's uh, hopefully it gets a bigger release. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. All right, uh, do you have a couple then? Yeah, I've got a few here that uh, I've also been looking forward to, uh, including uh, Poor Things, uh, the next film by Yorgos Lanthimos. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's uh, got a pretty stacked cast. I'll let you read the uh, synopsis that's uh available on your own time because it is absolutely insane as you would expect but it's got a stacked cast including emma stone willem dafoe mark ruffalo uh to name a few margaret qualey's also on there um is absolutely wild uh from the letterbox description uh it should be very interesting uh it reminds me a little bit of the uh of the mountain but just on a crazy uh, a crazy different level uh, with its uh, inclusion of scientists and um, and uh, old science. So, of course, I, I love Yorgos. Uh, I've, I've watched almost everything he's come out with, and especially a uh, big fan of uh, Dogtooth and Alps, mm-hmm. uh, both fantastic films. So his films are always on my radar for, from here on out. All right, yeah. Looking forward good choice, to good is, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely excited for that one. Um, another one that I have on my radar is the next film from George Miller, director of such classics such as Mad Max Fury Road, along with Happy Feet. Um, <laughs> yes. But uh, uh, absolute uh, auteur, uh, George Miller. Um, uh, but his next film is uh, titled 3,000 Years of Longing. Uh, it's a film uh, with uh, Tilda Swinton and Idris Elba in the cast uh, about a, a woman who uh, has the ability to uh, wish for three things offered upon him uh, or offered upon, uh, offered upon her by who I assume is Idris Elba. But it's a film about meaning and about love and about the ability to connect. It seems like a very interesting uh, slow-paced drama compared to what George Miller has done in the past with the Mad Max franchise, so that one's definitely on my radar. Um, uh, it should be a really interesting one, and I love Tilda right. Swinton, one of my favorite actors working in Hollywood in general. So yeah, no question, very excited about that one. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely interested in anything that uh, George Miller does. And then the last one that I have on my radar is uh, the latest film from Makoto Shinkai, uh, the director of Your Name, which is one of the best animated films of the 21st century. Uh, 
his next film is titled Suzumi no Tijimari, uh, just based on uh, the premise as well as how good your name is. Uh, it's one that I couldn't not have on my radar, no matter if it comes out in um, in 2022 or early 2023. Um, uh, again, the title is uh, Suzumi no Chijimari. Uh, right. it's, uh, yeah, so very excited about this one, no matter when it comes out. Uh, love his work and uh, couldn't be more excited for his next piece. So awesome. Yeah, I heard uh, I was talking recently to somebody about your name and they were highly recommending it to me. So, yeah, it's it's right. fantastic. Okay, uh, awesome. I didn't yeah. see his film from a couple years ago, uh, Weathering with You. I heard that one was good as well, but uh, I, I didn't see that one when it came out. So, yeah, definitely excited for this one. All right. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. I am now excited for that as well. I have not heard of it, but uh, yeah. sounds awesome. All right, cool. I'll also give a shout out to uh, to Jackass Forever, which releases today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh. I will definitely. <laughs> okay. I will definitely be watching that one when I get the chance. <laughs> I'm gonna be racing to the theaters for that one. Uh, I'm not. But you know, you have your fun. You have your fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good jackass movie. Good old Johnny Knoxville. Um. Okay. Did you have any other ones that we hadn't mentioned, Spencer? That you barely made your cutter. Uh. Uh. But I got one. It's been getting a lot of buzz uh, just because I think they released a full-length trailer that this past week, actually. Um, but it's this movie that I, I haven't heard of this filmmaker before, uh, Kogonada. Okay. They just go by the single name uh, Kogonada. They directed After Yang. Yep. Um, it's an A24 movie that's that's coming out uh, in March. And it, it's a high-concept science fiction film uh, where Colin Farrell and Jodie Turner-Smith are trying to save their robotic family babysitter yang um after he becomes unresponsive um and it's been getting some serious critical acclaim when it when it premiered at can so uh, i'm excited yeah. to check that one out because yeah. i'll really watch anything a24 pushes at me yeah, yeah I heard if it you was hadn't a... seen um no if, if you haven't seen columbus i'd highly recommend it as well ah I, columbus was on my radar i'll, I'll have to check that yeah. out yeah the very good one um I, I think Yang. you were recommending that to me yeah uh it's one that was on my radar uh quite a while ago um and it was getting some some push because koganata is well known for um uh for his um uh, his video essays that he's done in the past um and uh <clears throat> and yeah uh columbus was uh, his first feature and it did uh, it it did good numbers in the uh, in the independent scene, so yeah, I I wasn't aware that he had a new film coming out, so that'll be really interesting. Yeah, I've heard of nothing but good things from people who've seen it at Sundance and stuff, so I'm excited for that one as well. Um, a couple others, I know it was at Sundance. I don't know if it's technically 2021, but the worst person in the world, I am very excited to see as well. I that one might have been at TIFF. I think it might have been at TIFF as well. Yeah, I heard a, I heard that one was supposed to be pretty pretty big. Yeah, a couple other names just to keep on your radar. Cha Cha Real Smooth was apparently some a nice like feel good. I don't know if it was feel good, but just a, a drama that was uh, at Sundance as well that it was apparently really really good. And uh, there's a really cool documentary that uh, I've heard good things about called Fire of Love that was at Sundance, and it's Ooh. about this. Uh, I believe there were a couple of yeah they were scientists and they died in a volcanic explosion doing the very thing that brought them together unraveling the mysteries of volcanoes by capturing the most explosive imagery ever recorded and there's like one image that's on the imdb page like the main it's not a poster or anything but like it's just insane um so i would look out for that and i had a friend who saw it and he said it was awesome so that seems really cool but i'll check that out yeah check out that just that one image is just it's just crazy it's just giant, a giant wave of lava just behind this person in like this suit, uh, but it looks really cool. Um, yeah, so I feel like those are most of the ones I'm anticipating. There are some big movies coming out that people are, uh, other people may be excited for, but uh, we got things like uh, Death on the Nile, 
It's coming out next week, as well as Mary oh, Me, yeah. Owen, Owen Wilson, J Lo. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> That is one that uh, that is one that my girlfriend and I will definitely be checking out. Oh, you're gonna check. Uh, oh boy. Okay. We we will definitely be checking that one out over a few beverages. It'll be a good one. Uh, gotcha. um, then we got Liam Neeson action movie Blacklight. That's one that me and my mom are gonna check out because <laughs> we'll watch any Liam Neeson uh, any Liam Neeson action movie. Um, no question. Actually, this one is pretty cool. Actually, I'm excited for Turning Red. I'm sad that it's only going to be a Disney Plus and not a uh, yeah theatrical release. Which oh, that's, sucks. Yeah, that's too bad. Damn. But uh, yeah, Toronto-based uh, Pixar movie looks pretty cool. So excited for that one. Um, we got Uncharted. Looks like uh, I am not very excited for it. We'll <laughs> probably watch it. I'm not gonna lie. It's it just looks like Don't. Red Notice, but with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. You know. It just seems like don't they... upset Tom and Zendaya stands, Josh. I know, I know. But like, it just seems like the most like people wanted Uncharted movie for so long, and like the trailer's been playing on repeat at the theater, and like him just jumping out of a plane <laughs> trying to grab on these boxes is just. Uh... It, it seems it's... like they're really trying to. Uh, you, you could give them credit for trying to. Uh, emulate some of the scenes from the video games but yeah. when it's like when it's so blatant that they're trying to just copy scenes from the video <laughs> games it's a little bit too on the nose for me at least yeah also i know that mark Wahlberg really wanted to make this like he really wanted to make an uncharted film like 10 years ago when he could when he was young enough to play nathan <laughs> drake <laughs> But now he's too old, so now he's <laughs> just gonna be the, the the second guy. Yikes! But uh, I, it's gonna be pretty big, I guess. But yeah, uh, then we got Morbius, of course. <laughs> the latest Marvel movie was supposed to come out like next week, but nope, it's like March now. Um, I don't think any of you care about that. Uh, I don't personally, but. Morbius. Uh, oh, this one is very exciting, actually. Ambulance. Oh, dude. Of course. Ambulance is going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If, if Michael Bay is staying away from the Transformers series, I'll, I'll take a look at what he's got coming out. Uh, I'm not I'm not overly excited, but I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I think it's, it's just going like to be ridiculous. Like the trailer is the whole story and they're just they're in an ambulance the whole time. It's it's crazy. I, I, it's crazy. I, just, I just like the thread. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ambulance. It's gonna be wild. Um, I saw the trailer recently for this next movie at the theater called The Outfit. Kind of feels like it. I don't have high hopes, but uh, it could be an interesting, like one of those you know fun mystery action movies. So it's Mark Rylance. He's like a tailor, right, but like also a like a tailor, but assassin also. or something. So. I don't know. Could okay. be interesting. Um, then we have Fantastic Beasts, the uh, series that just won't die. Um, <laughs> Come on, they want to do five, it. Josh. Oh, God. We're only halfway through. I remember <laughs> being like, oh, the first one's fun. Yeah, that's cool that they had like spin-off Harry Potter, and that's that. But no, there's so much more now. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I am beyond not excited for it. <laughs> um, me neither next one that could be fun unbearable weight of massive talent it's very just playing off nicholas cage just sauce and uh i mean the trailer's fun it's like okay this is a very charming concept which it could be good could be fun but i could also see it just being super cheesy but uh i will probably watch it not gonna lie um there is an elvis movie coming out who's playing elvis yeah again? uh boz lerman Boz. uh austin butler austin butler right yeah so yeah, uh, yeah I, that's movie. one that i'm more austin. excited for yeah uh, I'm, I'm a little excited for the for the elvis one i think that could be good we got a few music uh music biopics coming up this year uh, i know we've got one for you know elvis we have one for the bgs as well okay um, yeah yeah i think uh yeah it could be good i like the casting and uh the um the elvis one is directed by Boz lerman yeah. of uh romeo and juliet and um was it 
which was a great Gatsby fame. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it could be interesting. Uh, uh, he knows how to work his way around a musical as well. Yeah. So. Moulin Rouge. Uh, yeah, Moulin Rouge. Um, he's got he's got the chops. So yeah, that one that one I'll keep my eye out for. Yeah, Tom Hanks is in it too. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, should be interesting. Uh, we got also Top Gun, the movie that will never release. I don't think it's actually gonna happen. You know. Because it was supposed to release in like 2020, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like ugh, Top Gun's like fine. The original's like fine. It's not like crazy or anything. But it's nothing that special. But Tom Cruise just do insane things yeah. for the sake of film. <laughs> but hey, he's probably actually driving those planes, so you know, could be cool visuals. You know? I'm sure he is. <laughs> That's why I, I. That's the only reason why I'd have any kind of interest because he's doing his own stunts. Yeah, he wouldn't have it any other way. Um, no, not at all. Yeah. So, there's also a new Jurassic World movie. I oh, didn't even man. see the second one. I saw the first <laughs> one and it was like the most forgettable thing I've ever seen. But the second uh, there's one's a new one. Trash. There's a new one, so uh, keep your eyes peeled. Well, that franchise needs to yeah. die. <laughs> yeah. That. Well, yeah. Even more so than the Fantastic Beasts. Oh, Josh, um, the 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 cliffhanger ending of the second one. What was the cliffhanger ending? One, that they what? that the dinosaurs got off the island, <gasps> and are oh. coming to <laughs> and are coming to get you. That's crazy. That's yeah. You know, I could see it being fun, but uh, yeah, don't have very high hopes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not too intrigued. Yeah, the, the people are the pretty most... over Chris Pine at this point, <laughs> or not Chris Pine, Chris oh. Pratt. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, no, Chris Pratt. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, I've been tired of him for yeah. a hot minute. Um, okay, nearing the end here, we got Lightyear from uh, Disney, which uh, they just want to be Star animated Star Wars so bad, and you know what? As a science fiction fan, I'm excited for it. <laughs> I don't care. Which one is that? Lightyear, uh, the Buzz Lightyear movie. Oh, that one. Yeah. I'm gonna watch yeah. it. I don't care. I now, I'll, I'll take a look. I, I thought Disney was done with uh, sequels and spinoffs to their original work, but... Uh, I guess not. Or at least Pixar was. Um, I thought Pixar would be done with that, but I guess they want to milk Toy Story just a little bit more. But so okay. It's a you know sci-fi... What? Another sci-fi Pixar movie, and Wally was just... Sure. I, okay, I don't mean to compare it to Wally, but like, still, I just love any sci-fi world, so I'm excited for it. No, no question. <laughs> Um, There'll be we, some fun in there. Yeah, exactly. We got Black Adam. It's gonna come out this oh, year. Hell yeah, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne's so, been trying to get this movie made since 2013. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he he got it made. He got it made. He sure did. Um, I don't know what to expect. I have no clue. So uh, it's gonna happen, and we're probably all gonna go watch it. And uh, hell yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Um, yeah, so we got man, Dwayne Johnson is a superhero. Like, and we got Pierce Brosnan in there as well. <laughs> Love me hey, some don't Pierce get, Brosnan. Don't forget about Aquaman two. That one's coming. Oh, I was just getting to that. No, oh, come on. There's there's one more DC as well. Also, Noah Centineo is in oh. Black Adam. Just throwing that out. There. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So we yeah Aquaman have Aquaman as well. The first Aquaman is like the most average superhero movie I have ever seen. Um, yeah, uh, and then also I'm pretty sure the Flash is coming out as well. So big year for DC content, gotta say. Yeah, the Flash. It says Ben Affleck is still in it, so you still got the Bat flick hanging out. Oh so, uh, hell yeah! Oh, wait, Maybe it's what? his last appearance. Oh, I think, never mind. I'm looking at the credits, and it says Ben Affleck is Batman, Michael Keaton as Batman. So maybe it's like a multiverse thing, too. Is that what's happening here? Yeah, maybe. Or maybe it's oh, just man. like archive footage from Justice League or something. Yeah, who knows. But uh, there, Ezra Miller was like, okay, he was bad in Justice League. Let's just say he was like the worst part <laughs> oh easily easily yeah so uh i can confidently say i am not looking forward to this 
Um, <laughs> but it's going to happen. So, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. A couple other. Are you guys a fan of the Halloween franchise? I haven't really seen any of them, so. Uh, I am. I haven't seen the new ones. Um, but, uh, the ending of the new trilogy the... is coming out. Halloween ends. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the um, the first of this new trilogy uh, a bit. Uh, I liked it. It was um, it was cool just seeing Mike do his thing, uh, and uh, bringing back Jamie Lee Curtis was really cool. And I like uh, where her character is. Uh, the ending of the first one was good. They could have ended it there, but they chose to go the trilogy route. The second one takes place directly after. Um, it has good moments, but they kind of sidelined Jamie Lee Curtis for the most of, most of that one to focus on Judy Greer and um, the rest of the town. Yeah. And uh, it, it felt like they were just kind of bide some time so they could do a third one where the they will inevitably do the confrontation between Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael and do the final boss fight. I'm really hoping that when they do it, it is a... Uh, Freddy versus Jason esque shit show that just kind of goes on for way too long, but is just incredibly entertaining throughout the entire thing. Um, so hopefully it's it's good. I like David Gordon Green. I think he's a very good director. I think he, he knows his way around the camera, and he really loves the Halloween franchise. And uh, yeah, I just want it to be a good a good climactic ending to the story that he's trying to tell with uh, with this current trilogy. So. I, I would recommend the first of his films. Uh, the second one, there's a few good scenes in it, but uh, overall, just just hoping that it's a good ending. Yeah, well, Halloween Ends is the title. Okay, a uh, couple more. I know we talked about Aquaman, we talked about Avatar, I guess, loosely, but hey, Avatar is actually happening. <laughs> End of this year, so that'll be... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm more excited for uh, Avatar 5 in oh, uh, dude, 2020. Avatar 5 is going to be so sick, but... Honestly, like amazing. as memey as Avatar is, I think if James Cameron has worked this long to try to pull these together, and he clearly loves the franchise, um, I'm I'm interested. I'm interested because like Avatar one is like it's not bad. It's 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 all right, but uh, no, not at all. It's fine. Yeah, it's all right. And uh, if you can have that world and actually stuff a really good story into it, hey, I'm here for it. Probably should have ended at one though. No <laughs> yeah. They've been trying way too long yeah. to get this going. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. A couple others. We got Creed three. I saw Creed through and I three or I saw Creed two and I never saw Creed one. <laughs> but uh, Creed two was pretty good, so uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it for what it was. So uh, I don't know if you guys are a fan of that, but uh, yeah, Creed three is coming out. Yeah, I, I I'm a big fan of the Rocky franchise as a whole, including the Creed franchise. Um, Rockies one through four are pretty solid, and then Rocky Balboa, Rocky six is quite good as well. Um, and then the Creed films, I, I really think Creed one is is one of the better sports movies out there. And then Creed two has its moments. I think it's pretty good as well. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see Creed three. I, I like a good uh, I like a good Michael B. Jordan, and uh, yeah, he's good. I like a good Sly. See see what he can do uh hanging out yeah so I'll, I'll see that one for sure now that one could be a lot of fun yeah all right three and a half more films and you'll see why in a sec uh black panther 2 is coming out so um allegedly yeah allegedly we'll see yeah I that one's like, gonna get delayed again black panther 1 nominated for best picture i think it was pretty good i think it's like mid-tier marvel in my opinion it was fine yeah yeah We'll see what happens. It's Marvel, so yeah, that's their... Might happen this year, might not. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but there's a David Lowry, Peter Pan, and Wendy movie. Really? Which could be very interesting. I, yeah, it's, it was not on my radar at all. It's slated did, for the end of the year. It might be 2023, so... Sorry, what were you saying? Did they end up casting uh, Tom Holland in that, or did they end up not? I don't know. There's not, like too much details on it right now so uh but i can I remember so many rumors i saw so many rumors back in the day shortly after civil war of uh 
Disney looking at a at a Tom Holland Peter Pan film, but I don't think it ever happened. I don't think they ever got it off the ground. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if it was just fan casting that got pretty hyped, but yeah, yeah it was. I don't know uh, if it's fan it was I, yeah, but uh, yeah, he's probably too old for that now. But hey, it's David Lowry who did uh, Ghost Story and Green Knight, yes. so he's that's dragon. just excited, uh, exciting to begin with. So. That could be really cool. <laughs> the last movie, which is my one and a half movie, is that there's two Pinocchio movies coming out. <laughs> Did you guys know this? Yeah, I think I, I, I think it. I know who one of them. Yeah. So is, one but... of them, the one I am more excited for, is Guillermo del Toro's stop motion animation. Yes. Pinocchio, which I mean, stop motion is just the most impressive form of filmmaking there is out there, and. Uh, it's Guillermo, and I, I really like Nightmare Alley personally, and I do love me some Guillermo, so it says a darker version of the classic children's fairy tale with a wooden puppet that transforms into a real living boy. Uh, a darker Pinocchio, and that could be sick, so I'm more excited for this one. Has Kate Blanchett, Ron Perlman, Ewan McGregor, Finn Wolfhard, Tilda Swinton, Christoph Waltz, John Turturro, Tim Blake Nelson, so like, pff. yeah, there's that one. And then the rival has a pretty decent cast as well. It's Robert Zemeckis in Disney's Pinocchio, which is an animated, a live action, sorry, live action adaptation of Disney's Pinocchio with Tom Hanks, Luke Evans, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Keegan-Michael Key, Cynthia Cynthia Erivo. Um, uh, Yeah, so. (laughs) I think I could probably predict everything that will happen in this movie. Like, yeah, this one, uh, I'm definitely more excited for the Del Toro, but uh, there's going to be a battle of Pinocchios, which is so weird. Yeah. But uh, it's going to happen at the end of this year, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, it's not even a comparison. Yeah, I uh, it's really yeah. Not. I think the other Pinocchio is going to knock this one out of the park, but uh, we'll see. I hope, I hope, we'll it, see, it, it, does, uh, I hope it, it eclipses it well. But, uh, yeah, there's, like, a short, like, teaser thing for the Guillermo one, and the stop motion looks awesome, so. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> the Battle of the Pinocchios that will take place at the end of 2022. So, um, yeah, I feel like that's all the movies I wanted to go over. I feel like I'm very happy to see that a lot of the movies that we're all excited for are because of filmmakers. And it's, like, a lot of them, like, we have these trusted filmmakers that uh, – are the ones who are kind of what we're interested in. We, we, we trust what they're going to bring to the table. So that's always just nice to see. Just something I thought I'd point out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I think 2022 is going to be pretty good. And uh, yeah, I mean, you just brought, Noah, you brought a lot of ones that weren't even on my radar, which I'm now excited for. Oh, so. wow. I'm glad. I'm glad I could throw some, yeah. some curveballs at you. Oh, actually, one last one. It was at Sundance. It was called Duel. It's by Riley Stearns, who did The Art of Self-Defense. Yeah, yeah, I did hear about that one. Karen on Gillian, one and the plot is that terminally, terminally ill can get themselves cloned, but she ended up being fine after she was cloned, so they have to duel to the death to see who will be the survivor. <laughs> Sounds very interesting. And so I heard Art of Self-Defense was very, like, a quirky comedy, and, uh, yeah, it seems pretty cool. So last one I wanted mm. to throw in there. Interesting. But yeah, looks like it's going to be a, a good year. I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have any closing remarks that you wanted to say? Uh, yeah, I'm very excited. It seems like there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of everything coming out this year. That there's uh, some noteworthy uh, dramas, noteworthy horrors, uh, period pieces, uh, sort of art films, sci-fi, a little bit of everything coming out that um, we're excited for pretty good some good big budget uh releases uh yeah so i think it'll be a good year uh even got a jackass film come on you can't be excited (laughs) you know it's a good year when there's a jackass film exactly (laughs) nothing bad happens whenever there's a jackass film Uh, okay whatever (laughs) but uh all right yeah uh got anything to say spenny or uh yeah i'm I, I'm excited for all the stuff that's coming out this year, and even though like we're making fun of a lot of the movies, I, I hope they all do well. Yeah, 
Exactly. You know, We're never hoping for case. a movie to be bad, but uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be a good year. Unless it's Lots of great titles. Minions Two: Rise of Gru. I hope. That's <laughs> Right, Always so, hoping that uh, Illuminations films do bad. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but uh, all right, cool. Well, uh, thank you, lads, for this uh, for this film talk slash podcast episode of the Film Spot. Um, yeah. So we're still doing the uh, Monday night Cine Club stream, and it's Kung Fu Hustle this Monday at seven p.m. Mm. EST. So uh, I had a few people who watched it already, and. Uh, they said it was pretty fun. Like, they weren't expecting what they got. And, yeah, the guy who recommended it to me swears by this movie. He recommended it to me. I told him I was going to do it for the Cine Club, and then he rewatched it again. He said it's, like, his 25th time watching it. So, like, high praise from him. So. Awesome. <laughs> I think I'm going to watch it tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. Should be a good one this Monday. But uh, Excellent. Yeah. That, that, that about Sounds does great. it for the uh, upcoming 2022 if you just so happen to be listening to this. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, should be good year. See ya. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for hosting, Josh.